In this portion of our congruent triangles lesson, I'm going to look at two proofs. We're going to prove that triangles are congruent. In this first example, notice I have a bunch of given information. I have what we're trying to prove, and I have a picture. Now, when we write a proof, I want us to think back to the parts of a good proof. I'm going to refresh our memories. Notice the first one was to state what is to be proved. A lot of times this is going to be some theorem, or it's going to be a conjecture in if-then format. Once you have that, then we're going to go on to list the given information. Notice we can find that in the hypothesis of our conjecture from part one of a good proof. Part three, remember, draw a picture, and I really need to fix this, and mark it up. Part four, state what is to be proved. That we're going to find in the conclusion of our if-then statement from part one. And then once that's all done, then we're going to go through and we're going to write our proof. Keep that in mind as we go through this. So step one, we need to state the conjecture theorem. Well, in this one, it doesn't have a conjecture. It doesn't say prove this if-then statement. It doesn't say prove this theorem. We don't have it. We don't have to worry about it. That's one that sometimes we get to skip. Part two, it says list the given information. Well, this problem is nice. All the given information is right there. Write it down, and you have it. Step three is to draw a picture and mark it up. Nice. The picture's already here. Now, the mark it up part is let's go to our given information and let's write down everything we know or mark up everything we know. It tells us that angle A is congruent to angle D. It tells us that angle B is congruent to angle E. And it tells us that angle C is congruent to angle F. So I've marked the, the corresponding angles to be congruent. Now I'm going to go to the sides. It tells me that segment AB is congruent to segment DE. Marked. Segment BC is congruent to segment EF. I have that marked. And now segment AC is congruent to segment DF. And that's all the given information that I have to mark up in my picture. Part four was to state what is to be proved. Well, it tells us right here. We're trying to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And when I look up here, I think back to what does it take to say the two triangles are congruent? Well, we had to know that we had three sets of corresponding congruent angles, which I look at here and I have three angles from the triangle on the left. They mat or match up or correspond to three angles in the triangle on the right, and they're congruent. And I have to have the same thing with the sides, three set of corresponding congruent sides. Look at my three sides on the triangle ABC, look at my three sides in triangle DEF, and yeah, I have it. So in my mind right now, I already know that these two triangles are congruent. Now it goes on to step five of just writing the actual proof. So I'm going to write it as a two-column proof, one that we're familiar with, I'm just going to start writing. Statement one. Well, I'm going to go with all my given information. I'm going to go with angle A being congruent to angle D. And my reason for that is given. The problem gave it to me. I don't need a reference number for anything that's given. Step two. Angle B is congruent to angle, and I believe it was E. I'm going to go up here and double check. Yep. And again, my reason for that is given. I'm just going to use the ditto marks. Statement three, angle C was congruent to angle F. And again, that is given. Keep going with all my given information. Now I'm going to move into the sides. So I had segment AB was congruent to segment DE. Reasons over here have been pretty difficult, given. Number five, segment BC congruent to segment EF. Here my reason is given. And the last thing that it told me was that segment AC was congruent to segment DF. And my reason is given. Well, remember, now we're to this stage. Everything that's in my picture has been put into my proof. That's the nice thing about drawing the picture and marking it up. 
take all those little congruent markings and put a statement for each one of them into your proof. Remember, when I looked at this earlier, I said, well, now I know my triangles are congruent. Well, being I've put all that information into my proof, now I should be able to say what I'm trying to prove, that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now comes the reason, though. Well, the reason that we know they're congruent is because the three sets of corresponding angles are congruent, the three sets of corresponding sides are congruent, therefore my triangles have to be congruent. Well, where did this come from? Well, it came from your definition of congruent triangles. That was the definition. It said we had to have three sets of corresponding angles being congruent and three sets of corresponding sides being congruent. And we have all that in our proof. Now, remember, reference numbers. Well, I look back and I go, well, where did I get my three angles from? Well, this statement's one through three. Where did I get my three sets of sides? Statements four through six. Therefore, I needed statements one through six to be able to say that the triangles are congruent. And now that I've stated that my triangles are congruent, I'm done with that proof. So let's take a look at one more. And again, we'll go through our, our four steps of writing a good proof. Step one, state the conjecture of the theorem. Again, it doesn't give us one, so we can skip that one. Part two, list the given information. It's all right there, taken care of and done. Part three, draw a picture and mark it up. The picture's here, but it hasn't been marked up. I'm going to go and I'm going to take my given, inf given information and I'm going to mark it up. It tells me that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. It tells me that angle 5 is congruent to angle 6. And then it tells me that segment AB, that this one is congruent to segment EF. Segment AC is congruent to segment FC. And segment BC is congruent to segment EC. There you go. And now I'm going to look at my picture. I'm going to see if I can find anything else that might be congruent or might not be congruent. Well, I'm going to look for anything that's not congruent. But anything else that would be congruent. And I look in here and I see angle 1 and I see angle 2. Those are vertical angles. I know that vertical angles are congruent. We had a theorem that told us that vertical angles are congruent. You can mark that. That's about all that I look at my picture right now. and that I'm going to mark. Now there are other things that we could mark, but those, those will be important for when we get in here to step four, which is state what is to be proved. It's right there. We're trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And I look up here, and again, I need three sets of angles that are congruent. When I look at my triangle on the bottom, triangle ABC, I have three angles that are being marked. And I look at the triangle on the top, those same three, or those corresponding three angles, are congruent in the top triangle. That's good. I have to have three sets of corresponding sides be congruent. While I look at the bottom triangle, I have the single tick, the double tick, and the triple tick. And I get those same tick marks on the triangle on top. I have my three sets of angles. I have my three sets of sides. In my head right now, I know the triangles are congruent. I'll be able to uh, write my proof. Now, in this proof, I'm going to do it a little different. You can write a two-column proof if you'd like. I'm going to show you another method, which is called the flow proof. Now, in this one, you're going to do the same thing. It'll give you a statement and a reason. You're just going to organize it in a different manner. I'm going to again start with my given information that angle 3 is congruent to angle five, or 4, excuse me, and I can look at my picture for this. Now, in the flow proof, statements are going to go on top, reasons are going to go right underneath them. My reason for this is given. I'm going to go on to my next statement, which it doesn't matter where I put it. I can really put it anywhere on my piece of paper. I'm going to go with angle 5 being congruent to angle 6. Statement there, reason right underneath, that's given. And being I'm working with my angles, I'm going to work with my last set of angles that I know are congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. My reason for that, remember, was not given because it's not a part of the given information but it's coming from my picture, and I noticed that they were vertical angles. So my reason is vertical angles are congruent. I have all three angles, or sets of angles, being congruent in my proof now. Now I'm going to go to the sides. Well, I have segment AB 
congruent to, I'm going to go back to my picture, so that's the single tick, segment EF, that's the single tick on the other triangle. My reason for that was given. Come up to my picture and find another thing. Well, now I'm going to look at the double ticks. So that's going to be segment AC and segment FC being congruent. Segment AC congruent to segment FC. Again, that was another piece of given information. And the last would be my triple ticks of segment BC and segment EC. So segment BC is congruent to segment EC, and that's given. Well, I have my six pieces of information that I need. Now I should be able to say the two triangles are congruent, which would be triangle ABC and triangle FEC. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FEC. And my reason for this, not any different than the last proof that we did, it's our definition of congruent triangles. Notice I'm abbreviating, leaving out some of the small words, <coughs> using symbols. But now in the flow proof, we need to connect all of the statements that are needed to say another one. Now, I didn't need to connect this to anything because it was given. But when I get down here, I needed a lot of statements to be able to say that. I needed to know that angle 3 and angle 4 were congruent. I needed to know that angle 5 and angle 6 were congruent. I needed to know that angle 1 and angle 2 were congruent. I needed to know that segment BC and segment EC were congruent. I needed to know that segment AC and segment FC were congruent. And I needed to know that segment AB and segment EF were congruent. These little connectors, not really lines, kind of curves, are very similar to the reference numbers in a two-column proof. Everything that you needed to know to be able to say this has to be connected to it. So there's a flow proof to prove that those two triangles are congruent. Wish I could get it all on, the sa on one screen, but it's kind of big. Just remember the definition of congruent triangles is down there. And those are the two examples on proving triangles are congruent using the, the formal two-column proof or flow proof.